Adria, what might the Holy Spirit say to us about using the internet? Not all the internet is sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> what might the Spirit of Truth tell us about using cell phones today? That you have to be careful about what you do with it because it's, well, it's very expensive and also people could hack it and do bad stuff to you through it. So really the answer to this question is, it depends. He might tell us that um, we shouldn't use them as much as spending time with our friends and family. Okay, so here's something else the disciples would not have been able to handle. Living and voting in a democracy. I know you guys can't vote yet. But right now we're not allowed to vote, and by the time we're allowed to vote, we don't really care that much anymore. Yeah, so what do we do about voting? Um, you hope for the best. Yes, you yeah. hope for the best. Or, or, or you, just, you just grab your finger and you just... randomly. Okay, that's what we do, so but do what do you think... on the internet. Okay. So that's what you should do. You should do some research before you vote. Yep. Oh, and if you Which vote for the wrong first. person, then just um, um, don't vote for them again. But then, then again, the uh, looking for information online, that brings us back to the question. Uh, well, no, that brings us back to what Adria said about the internet not being all sunshine and rainbows, because it could be like a site that's lying to you or whatnot to, get, to influence you into picking this one person. I'm... They lived in a world where, I mean, frankly, women didn't count for anything. They were like nobodies. That was just they, the way the world They were a thing to make Same children. China, they were maybe a thing to make children, right. That was the world they lived Same in. Same in China. Yeah. And it, that's still... But I'm talking about Jesus' world at that time. So, yeah. so there's probably some things about the relationships between men and women that the disciples couldn't handle. And then those was these people. So, so I'm, what I'm wondering, and I'm going to ask you, Adria, first, because you might have an interest in the place of women, right? What might the Spirit of Truth say to us about relationships between men and women? Can you come back to me? Okay. I have something to say. Okay. Ask me a question. What might the Spirit of Truth say to us about relationships between men and women? That we're all equal. Okay. Yeah. So, so what might the Jesus have to say to the church today about what's important, what isn't? They isn't need to. You you don't only you can't only take care of other people. You have to take care of yourself. You think that's what that's what the Spirit of Truth would say to the church today? But that is true. Hmm. That is true. You need to take care of yourself and other people, not just yourself or just other people. Okay. But there is a hymn in, in one of the books upstairs and it says like the church is not the building, the church is the people. Yep. Oh my gosh. My hand is asleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what does that mean for how the church needs to be? What should we put priorities on then? The people. Absolutely every person. Mm -hmm. We should put priorities on absolutely every person. On the people of God. Okay, so what are church buildings for? Like, we've got church buildings, though. What do we do with them? It's a gathering place for people who sure. believe in Christianity mm -hmm. and would like to worship God. And what should we do with that space that we have? We should respect it and take care of it mm -hmm. because it's an important space. Anything else we should do with it? Use it wisely. Mm hmm What do you think? Anything else we should do with what we have as a church? Fill it with people. Fill it with people? Should we use it for helping other people? Yeah. Yeah? That's what I meant by fill it with people. Okay. So is the church just for people who got everything all worked out? No. You'll have all, you know, everything's great in their lives? So, like, what if, say, there's people in the community who need things, but if they come into the church, they might mess things up or things might get dirty. What do we do then? Um, not actually sure. No? I never really thought about it. 
Mm. Is it more is it more important to help them or is it more important to take care of our building? Help them. You think so? Yeah, you should help them. Mm -hmm. We just said that the church is not the church is not the building, it's the people. The church is the building's more of like a gathering, like a meeting spot to say, come join us and 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 help everybody and worship and but the church tries to do a lot of helping people. Mm-hmm. And, and that's good. That's what that's what the spirit would want us to do. Jesus might tell us that we should try and get along more and um, have a little bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, so anything else you think that that maybe the disciples couldn't handle and that we need to that the spirit might say to the say to us today football football what might the spirit say about football well, it's confusing you have to start at the first down and, well, I don't even understand. and then when the ball hits Except the ground then it's dead i can tell you guys so the disciples couldn't handle that i don't understand but is that something the spirit would say something about i don't know oh okay no, <laughs> no. something i think the spirit of truth would probably say about is probably like space what might the spirit of truth say about space? Let, let me tell you something. The, the people that Jesus was talking to, the disciples, when they imagined the universe, they thought of the, t the church, of the world, as more or less like a table. Yeah, the world was flat. The world was flat, just because they didn't know what, have any other way of knowing it, and they thought of the sky as this then big dome across the top. And then in the Renaissance, there was this dude, Galileo Galilei. Yeah. Galileo, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. got in trouble with the, Cap the Catholic Church because he invented a telescope, and he found that the Earth was really orbiting. No, he found, he the, found, he found that the Earth was really orbiting or the sun, no, the earth is orbiting the sun, yeah. and so then the Catholic people didn't like that, so he got... So here's a question for you. You're, you're absolutely right. Here's a question for you. So the disciples couldn't handle all that, right? Because they didn't have telescopes, they didn't have all that stuff. So what do you think the Spirit might say to us about... Like, if the Bible assumes one thing and science is telling us something else, what should we do with that? Then what's the Big Bang Theory? Well, that too. So what should we do if the Bible is assuming so, things about the world and science is telling us something else? How do we sort that out? The world was possibly created by the Big Bang Theory. Does that mean well, no, God just, Bang like, Theory? splat? No, wait, 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 wait. Um, so... The Big Bang Theory actually does make sense in the Bible because you know in the beginning of Genesis, God, so universe. So what you're saying is we should find some way to make the Bible compatible with what science has taught us? No, I'm sort of saying that. I mean, the Bible and science, if you look at it this way, both make sense. Okay. Life is great. That's all I have to say so now. That's good. Uh, yeah, both of those are just going to be in. May I add, life is great. We should treasure it as long as we have it. Same with 